before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. For today's patron shout out, I would like to thank Tozavel for being a patron. I can't thank you enough for your support. The world are you playing? I don't want to set the world. <laughs> Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today in Pub Stomp MTG. And in this video, I'm going to go over Agent Frank Horrigan from Fallout. This is a pretty cool commander. I've only played Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas, so I'm not too familiar with Agent Frank Horrigan. I feel like he's from the second game. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure. Either way, this looks like a very cool commander. Even though the mana cost is 7, you are in green color, so it's very easy to ramp into. Let's read what he does. So he is a mutant warrior, which is kind of interesting because i think he was a mutant soldier but i mean warrior's fine i guess he does have trample and does have indestructible as long as it attacked this turn also he does have the titan like effect as he enters the battlefield or attacks you proliferate twice so this can be very powerful this just screams infect for me mainly because he's infected himself and honestly he looks pretty badass not gonna lie so in this deck tech i'm gonna mainly focus on infect because i feel like this is definitely the way to go with proliferating twice especially if we can get him haste we're not in red so we're not really going to give him haste unless we do have concorded crossroads on the battlefield regardless of that i do have a little bit of a planeswalker sub theme because proliferating twice on your planeswalkers can be pretty powerful really getting to those ultimates really fast so without further ado let's dive right into it so first of all, I did want to highlight some great support cards. So first of all, I do want to mention the Ozolith. Both versions I think are excellent in the deck. The Ozolith can essentially put two 1-1 one -one counters on our commander. And when we do swing in with our commander, we can just proliferate twice and putting more counters on it. And if some of our creatures do die, they do have 1-1 one -one counters on them. We can just store them onto the Ozolith. So later on, we could either put them on our commander or other creatures we control. Following that, I do want to mention the Great Hedge because our commander does have a huge power. This will just essentially replace itself by casting it for two green mana and we could tap for two green mana. I will say it's pretty common knowledge to say that the Great Hedge is really good. It's really good in this deck because it taps for mana, gains life, also puts one with counters on our creatures that enter the battlefield, and draw cards. So it's really doing everything we want in this deck anyways. So it's just more of a good stuff card. Going back to our commander's power, he does have a huge power so why not take advantage of that by using cards like Rich Card's Expertise and Return of the Wild Speaker. Because our boy Frank has eight total total power, we could draw 8 cards off of Rishgar's expertise and cast something for free potentially. And with Return of the Wild Speaker, I love this card because not only does it act as a great card draw outlet, it also focuses on an overrun ability, just in case if we need to squeeze a little bit more damage and possibly go for commander damage. Another great addition I did want to highlight is Massacre Girl Node Killer. I personally think this is really good in the deck, mainly because creatures you control have withered that does include our commander. So all our creatures, including our infected creatures, will deal damage in the form of minus one minus one counters and we could easily proliferate those with our commander or other means and we could easily get a lot of card draw out of this if our opponents are blocking our creatures and they die to our creatures with those minus one minus one counters so seriously massacre girl is going to be excellent in this deck another excellent card i do want to highlight is roaming throne you could either name mutant or warrior with roaming throne and when your commander enters the battlefield or attacks instead of proliferating twice you're going to be proliferating four times over with roaming throne so yeah, who knows, this might be an okay card. I mean, it's not that great. In all seriousness, this is a great include in any deck that really wants to focus on Commander's Trigger's abilities. So now that I've talked about some of the support cards, I also want to talk about Counter Synergy. So the first card I do want to highlight is very versatile, and that's Arch Druid's Charm. I feel like this is very underrated, and a lot of people should be putting this in a lot of their green decks. It does have three different modes, basically searching a library for a creature or land card and revealing it. If it was a creature card, you put it into your hand. If it was a land, you put it onto the battlefield so that by itself is pretty good with a second mode we can put a 1-1 counter on a creature we control like our commander and we can deal damage equal to its power to another creature or we could use that last mode to 
exile a target artifact or enchantment that's pretty pesky on the battlefield. I've already slotted this into many of my green decks and honestly it does a lot of work. I love it so much. I did also want to highlight some cards from Fallout like Feral Ghoul and Alpha Deathclaw. I just like these because these actually deal with counters in their own way. Feral Ghoul focuses on the rad counters and you can just stack the 1-1 counters on it the more creatures you control die. Plus we can just proliferate those counters on the Feral Ghoul with our commander when it enters the battlefield or attacks. The same can be said for Alpha Deathclaw. If it is monstrous it'll be a 10-10 and if we do swing it with our commander it'll become a 12-12 if we do proliferate it. So again I find these more fun includes. There's a lot more Fallout cards that you can add into this list. I just did want to highlight these ones specifically. If you aren't a counter theme Vorclex Monstrous Raider is a great include in the deck. It does have the most important ability if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. So that does include when we do proliferate and we put more counters on our creatures twice that many would be instead. So this does include plus one plus one counters minus one minus one counters poison counters you name it. It does also include loyalty counters so that's why I did add some planeswalkers to the list. So planeswalkers like Liliana, Garrick, or even Vraska are great options to put in the deck. I personally like Vraska the best out of these options mainly because of that zero ability draw a card and you lose one life and you proliferate. Plus with our commander entering the battlefield and attacking these planeswalkers can be clocks on the battlefield for our opponents. Again I like Vraska the best because it does have great abilities of big removal plus she has the ultimate that synergizes most with our deck. Minus nine if target player has fewer than nine poison counters they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. So if you do pull out that ultimate you can just swing in with your commander agent Frank and proliferate those counters so that one opponent does die. Speaking of poison counters that is how we are going to win the game. We're going to make sure all our opponents get 10 poison counters each so that we can win the game. Ways we can do that is by using cards like Infectious Bite, Drowning Nicker, and Vraska's Fall. I like each of these because either they start the chain of giving our opponents poison counters or they proliferate. Infectious Bite and Vraska's Fall make sure that we can get a poison counter on our opponents so that when we do swing in with our commander we can just proliferate those counters even further. Plus the main reason why I did want to include these and focus on them is the fact that they act as removal in each of their own way. We can also take advantage of Venerated Rot Priest mainly so that our opponents think twice when they target our creatures so that they don't get a poison counter. Plus there are some ways where we can target our creatures so I feel like Venerated Rot Priest can be very good in this deck like whether our opponents try to target our creatures or we target our creatures ourselves. We're going to give so much poison counters everywhere so that's why I do like this card in the deck for sure. I did also want to highlight some big boys like Bloated Contaminator, Tyranex Rex, and Scythrix the Blight Drag. Bloated Contaminator acts as a great toxic card. Not only that, it can proliferate when it deals combat damage to a player. Tyranex Rex is excellent. Anytime I can include a dinosaur with theme in the deck, I'm absolutely going to include it. It's Scythrix. Everybody knows Scythrix. It's absolutely amazing. Having Infect, being a 4-4 body, and can protect itself. It does have flying, so there's a lot of things going for it. I did also want to point out Phyrexian Swarmlord and also Contaminated Grafter. I think Contaminated Grafter is really good in there. Just try to get those extra proliferate triggers. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to one or more players, you proliferate. And if one of our opponents do have three or more poison counters, you can draw a card that put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So that's just great value alone right there. Phyrexian Swarmlord is excellent in the deck. The more poison counters we do have in our opponents, the more we do have the ability to put more 1-1 one, one insects on the battlefield with Infect. We can also take advantage of cards like Phoresis and Tainted Strike. Because our commander does have 8 power, we only need 10 poison counters to kill an opponent. So there are plenty of ways where we can just put 1-1 one, one counters on our commander so that when we do swing in, we can just deal 10 damage to them and if we do have one of these cards on him, it'll just be good game for one opponent. But why go small with just these cards when well, we can take advantage of Triumph of the Hordes? Giving all our creatures plus plus one plus one trample and infect is definitely going to close out the game the more creatures we do have on the battlefield even if we just have one counter on our commander with agent frank and we give him a one one counter trample and infect it's definitely going to be good game for one opponent for sure well as long as they're not blocking agent frank but remember we can't proliferate those counters with agent frank when we do attack so regardless i feel like it's going to be a good game if we do cast triumph for the hordes however that's going to do it for me guys thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on agent frank Horrigan. Honestly, this is a pretty sweet commander. The only thing holding me back from building it is the fact that it is 7 mana. That's quite a bit for a commander. Regardless of that, it's really cool. I like the ability of attacking or entering the battlefield. You proliferate twice. And also giving that indestructible ability as long as it attacked this turn is really powerful. Let me know down below 
below in the comments what are your thoughts and opinions on Agent Frank. And with all that said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stopping by.